let's get into this. Elijah McClain. So people have been asking me to make a video about this, to talk about the young man who lost his life in 2019 um, while in police custody. And if you are not familiar with this, Elijah McClain was walking down the street after, I, I believe he was purchasing something from a store. He had a ski mask on. Uh, the family say he's anemic, so he, you know, he's cold more often than not. And so that's why he had a hoodie and a ski mask on. Um, complainants or people in the area who called 911 said he was flooding his arms around. He looked suspicious because he had a ski mask on. They called in. Obviously, the police officers are going to take that call seriously and figure out what's going on. Now, they stopped him on the side of the road. I'll post a link to uh, some of the articles here so you can watch the video. I'm not going to play the video here because then they'll ban, the, they'll ban this whole video. So on the video, you can see the officers approach him. They were very calm. They were kind. They were reasonable. They stopped the young man. They said, hey, stop right there. We need you to stop. You're being detained um, because we need to investigate it because you're acting suspicious, according to the complainants. Stop right there. Hey, stop right there. Stop. 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 I have a right to stop you because you're being suspicious. Nine seconds after Turn exiting his vehicle, the officer initiates physical contact. Well, they hold him. They try to talk to him. They say, hey, man, please stop resisting. Don't don't get upset. Don't tense up. Let us get to the bottom of this and we'll let you go. And I'm paraphrasing, but you can look in the description section to see the video for yourself. He continued to tell them he's not going to do it. Let him go. He's he an introvert. He don't want you touching him. All of the above. They ended up getting in a physical altercation started by Elijah McClain. He physically start fighting and resisting. So they get, they get him on the ground. Supposedly they use what they call a karate choke, which caused him to pass out. Now watching the video, it's unclear if he passed out and came back to consciousness or not. But according to what the documents are saying is that he passes out. Now, based on the scuffle, the officers had indicated that he had superhuman strength. Strong, super strong. Three grown men can't take down a 23 year old who's five foot six and weighs 160 pounds. That's what you want to tell me? What that tells me is that he's not super strong. You're super weak, okay? All right, and if we had some actual physical standards in law enforcement, y'all wouldn't have that problem. That they believed that he was on something, he was hyped up, he was amped up. I have been in these situations before. It seems to be reasonable for them to give him a, give him a drug called ketamine. So it wasn't the police officers that gave him the drug ketamine. It was the EMT that suggested the drug, and they were the ones that administered the drug. While he was, apparently, it appeared that he was unconscious or he had stopped resisting. They gave him the ketamine. He ended up getting into or having a heart attack on the way to the hospital. He passed away six days later. This had nothing to do with police misconduct. The police were doing their job. He resisted arrest. They held him down. The EMT gave him ketamine. Now, according to the autopsy, um, the toxicology says that the, it wasn't enough ketamine in the system to kill him. And it's unclear what actually caused his death. They're not sure if it was an accident. They're not sure if it was some pre-existing conditions with ketamine or it was the officer's uh, use of force against him as he was resisting arrest or it was that he exerted himself while he was resisting arrest. There's no charges against these officers. The prosecutor said they're not going to bring charges. They should not charge these officers. I don't understand why people continue to do this. It is an unfortunate situation. I'm sad. It's sad that that kid lost his life. But the common denominator here that we always see, and it's all, more often than not, is that people are resisting arrest. Stop resisting arrest. If a police officer stop you and you feel that it's incorrect or they're doing something they're not supposed to do, to have your day in court. Now imagine a group of people just walking up on you, stop, 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 and then you, they grab you, grab you by the shoulder, and then try to turn you around forci forcibly, right? Imagine that. Any other scenario, what would you think? Like, what the heck is going on? Now you have a bunch of officers, given, given, given the, the, the history of law enforcement and the nonsense going on there, just pull up on you, you listen to the music, person's making some type of movement or something. He's like, you, you don't hear him. And then they just grab you and try to turn you around. And he tells them, yo, what are you doing? Like, yo, yo, stop, leave me alone. I'm going home. I'm going home. That's what the person said. They don't search him. They don't check to see what's in his bag. They don't do any of that. All right. They immediately try to manhandle him to the grass. And then they allege that a tussle ensues, that he tried to resist arrest. Resist arrest for what? You haven't even told him why you're stopping him. He's like, oh, we need your cooperation. With what?